Today we're going to compare the new Honda Moto Compacto to the original Honda Moto Compo Mini Scooter. We're going to find out which one is the best. Guess what we've got? Not one, but two new Hondo Moto Compacto scooters. Those are the spiritual successor of the original Moto Compo scooter that came in the back of the Honda City K car. Honda just released these last month and we'll show you how easy it is to set up. So first thing, kickstand down. Second thing, release the handlebar. Once the handlebar is out, I'm gonna extend it, lock it, lock it in the upright position. Rotate the bar. Pull out the seat. Put the seat in in the correct way. And then the last thing I need to do is extend the rear wheel. They're front wheel drive, rear wheel brakes. Pull out my foot pegs, turn it on, and I'm ready to ride. You need a little bit of a push off to get it started. They don't, you can't lean into the corner. <laughs> so now, Let's see how these stack up against the original Moto Compo. Go! Here we have a 2024 Moto Compacto scooter. You can get this at your Honda dealer if they're willing to sell it. It is a p accessory that's sold through the parts division. Here we have a 1983 Moto Compo. This is a 50cc gasoline fold-up scooter that came in the Honda City Mini Car. So, this is the spiritual successor of this. Both scooters fold up. They have a similar footprint, although this is about 12 inches larger, and the front wheel doesn't retract or extend. It's also about double the width and a little bit taller. This weighs 90 pounds according to Wikipedia, although I would say it's probably closer to 60. They say this weighs 50 pounds, and I don't know, that feels a lot lighter to me than 50 pounds, and my guns really aren't that big, so that's probably accurate. So what else do we have? On the original, we've got front and rear brakes, we've got headlights, turn signals, a horn, and an exhaust. On this one, we don't have to deal with any of the gasoline problems. So we get on, pop the kickstand, give it a little push off, and we can go. So this is very friendly to bring into the office, to bring into school, to bring indoors. You're not gonna smell like gasoline after you ride it, and you're not gonna piss your people off by polluting the hallways of your closest interior venue. Here in the background, we have a 1995 Honda Civic Si. The best Honda Civic hatchback in the best year, in the rarest color. This is probably one of the lowest miles examples in the country. All of these will actually fit in the back, which incidentally has a tailgate. One of the best parts about the EG EH hatch. We can easily fit two Moto Compactos and certainly one, if not two, Moto Compos. The other nice thing about the Moto Compo is it's actually designed to lay down flat and in our Honda Insight episode where we did a gas mile challenge we laid this down in a first generation Honda Insight. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use the airport at our disposal to see how these two stack up in the real world. The first test we're going to do is a drag race, a real world drag race. My speedometer turns red into the caution zone at 30 kilometers per hour, which is about 18 miles per hour. I'm on speed setting two. He's got about 15 pounds on me. 
So I think the handicap is pretty fair. I mean, let's let's be honest. I got like 30 pounds of, of meat and probably like 40 pounds of scooter on him. So that really shouldn't negate any power difference. call it 60 feet but I was starting to pull on you so now let's go let's go 10 squares and see all right all right let's do it race number two I win so I got you that time by like maybe a scooter win <laughs> What was that like 80, maybe 100 feet? That's probably 100 feet. Yeah. So now let's let's get a, a photo finish. So we'll do it again, just so we got best two out of three. We'll split the difference split the and we'll difference. go like 80 feet. 80 feet. And then we're gonna film from here, yeah. and you can get the photo finish. I think we showed this one's, a, you got me off the line, but I can eventually get you. He doesn't have a bell though. <laughs> I do, I've got a horn. <laughs> oh, damn it, another win for the moto. <laughs> All right, we tested it straight out acceleration. Now let's build a handling course. Agility's next. Why don't we, we could either use precious airplanes or cones. I think we should use two Porsches with a cone in the center. Okay. They're pretty precious. <laughs> I think you want to go a little bit further back. <laughs> this is the real deal. There's, a lot of money involved. There's easily a hundred grand of Porsche sitting there <laughs> and one little scratch is going to be incredibly detrimental and I don't want to hurt the closest thing I've ever had to a child as well. <laughs> so we're going to do a slalom test. We'll do an individual time trial and we'll do a dynamic test where we slalom together. And then we'll talk about which one's the best. I already know which one's the best. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do let's it. Do it. Time. 20.65. 20.65. 20 All right. Best, probably best two out of three. 20.65. Remember that. See if that. you can beat it. Go. <laughs> it's so quiet. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Oh. How much? 16.18. 16, 16 oh. even with dragging a peg? Yeah. What? Wow. This is how you do autocross. This is how you die. <laughs> <laughs> All right, racers, you ready? Racers, ready. Go. That was, so we're getting better, man. Yeah. We're getting fast, faster. All right, let's be honest. I think it's subjective. I think it's about getting you, off the line and the, and the final corner. What, you make, they're pretty comparable. All right, let's also be real world. 
Are you going to take your moto compo and go slalom them between Porsches? <laughs> Probably not. But maybe people on the streets? Yeah. But I can corner. I can spin a wheel. Stop, stop. <laughs> <Do that. laughs> I think let's just do a real world test. So we'll just drive to the fuel tanks and back. Because you right. need gas? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't need gas. There's one thing I noticed about this. It only has a front brake, which in the, I'm sorry, has a rear brake, which in the slalom definitely made me go butt wide. You got two brakes. I mean, this is like a miniature motorcycle. And anytime I've rocked up to a motorcycle gang, <laughs> I've walked away. That's about the best I've done. <laughs> What do you think? All right, it's definitely starting to get a little battery fade. Um, I topped out at about 16. I'd have to say like over the duration of the day, I think the Moto is gonna take the Moto Compacto. I think so. What's that? That's a five minute ride? How sore is your ass now? I'm pretty good. I have to say I'm pretty good. I'm like riding a, a leather banana. <laughs> Super comfortable. It's like grandma's couch. And look, my throttle's a little sticky. <laughs> Hold up, did you say you're riding a banana? <laughs> Here we got them side by side. We've done a thorough test. Let's just show you some of the details we have. So we'll start with the compacto. We've got bespoke leather stitching, fine leather. This is a nice, soft, supple leather. The case is a little bit PlayStation-y. Uh, it's not the sturdiest plastic, but underneath it's actually got a quite sturdy structural frame and the actual hardware itself is also very robust. Has a nice satisfying latch whenever you latch or unlatch. You've got a digital display. There's an app that you can connect this to. You've got a bell, just one brake, which is the rear brake and front wheel drive. So overall, I'm pretty impressed. I would expect some teething issues. Really, I think the biggest kind of struggle with the Compacto is the reluctance of the majority of Honda dealers to really embrace how popular this scooter is and how popular it could be. The Moto Compo, being from the 80s, oozes of quality. This was an era of Honda where it was just coming into its greatness. And I really can't thank Honda enough for giving a proper shot out back to this era. And this is definitely more of a motorcycle. It's a metal frame underneath. It still has kind of chintzy plastics, but it's got a nice comfortable seat. It's got carrying points. It's got tie down points, which is really nice. It has a more robust kickstand and the build quality of this is exceptionally well. I've been nothing but pleased with this. And I've got all the compliments of an actual motorcycle. I've got front and rear brakes. I've got a speedometer. It has an oil injection system, so I don't need to mix my two-stroke gasoline. I've got a fuel gauge, I've got a choke, I've got a fuel uh, cutoff switch, and I've got lights, turn signals, and a horn. If you're from my generation, which is generation X, I'm definitely more at home with this. If you're from a future generation, I can see the convenience of this and the real world usability. Uh, definitely this is more versatile, more usable, suits the mission of the modern world where this is just an unremarkable classic. Of all the cars we have here, all the fancy sports cars, the unique stuff, this has probably been one of my favorite things, my favorite pieces of equipment to come through the shop in the last five years. I absolutely love it. So I don't think you could go wrong with either, but uh, we've got one more test. All right, what's that? Who can unfold them the fastest? All right. On your mark, get set, go. He's crushing it. Hey, I'll see you later. <laughs> Damn it. Meanwhile, we're gonna put Thanksgiving at this point. I'm gonna disassemble just because I've done them both. Then there's no, there's no, we're not introducing any bias. 
because our goal here is proper journalism. So, on your mark, get set, disassemble. Probably the most uh, least intuitive part is that switch, but it does have a satisfying click when we do it. All right, I've got everything unlatched. I'm gonna pull this out, rotate it, lock it in place, and I guarantee there's lots of people out there who could do this faster than me, so I apologize for not doing proper justice to it. Slide this in, lock, and, and one nice thing, off I go. 44 seconds on the mark. Ready, set, disassemble. The Moto Capo has a key, which is awesome. The seat folds down. There's actually a micro switch that won't let you start it if the seat is not in the extended or erect position. Handlebars fold in here. Make sure I get my cables nice and even. Put in my cover, lock it so no one can steal it. Fold up my sides. And we are at exactly 26.5 seconds. So about half, half as long, but here's a good <laughs> challenge. Garth matters. <laughs> Let's race to the truck carrying them. <laughs> because mine weighs <sighs> twice as much. I think I'm gonna win this. <sighs> Ready, set, go. <laughs> 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 oh, oh. Alex, you're oh. late for the meeting. Ah. And I smell like gas. That could be a problem depending on the type of meeting. This has been a fun day, but it's time for final thoughts. In the real world, in the city, let's say you live in New York City, you live in a small apartment, you gotta get to work, you ride the subway, what do you have? That, because I'm not gonna smell like gas, I'm not gonna bring gasoline into my workplace, which could be a problem depending on your workplace. I'm not gonna make a bunch of noise. And quite frankly, looking at this, you really don't know what it is. It looks like a projector or a yeah. small TV. <laughs> yeah, it looks cool. This, on the other hand, is the one that I would keep forever. And the reason why is it's, it's iconic. There's an experience to owning this. It reminds me of an age of greatness that Honda was just embarking on. And it's a lot more usable as an actual vehicle. So if I didn't live in a city or I had to go farther across town, then I'd probably use this. If I wanted to cut through the mall on my way to lunch, I'd probably have the compacto. You're probably getting arrested in this. You're not getting arrested in this. Yeah, but you're getting laid on this. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what demographic. <laughs>